Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Steven Roth, and I'm a board certified oral and maxillofacial pathologist. Happy Halloween. Just like last year, I'll be telling you a real life spooky tale of oral pathology. Last year, I told you about Eben Byers, the man whose jaw fell off. This year, I'll be telling you about the matchstick girls whose jaws would glow in the dark. But first, we have to get into that disclaimer, and that is that all opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone, and do not represent any organization that may employ me or that I may belong to, and that this video is for educational purposes only and should not serve as medical advice. Should you have any questions or concerns about your oral or systemic health, please see your nearest oral or systemic health care provider. And with that being said, Let's get into today's video. The Industrial Revolution was a time of tremendous growth and change in industry. Sometimes, this growth came at the expense of workers and their safety, leading to modern-day unionization and safety policies. One such technological advancement was the Strike Anywhere match. This was because these matches didn't require the red phosphorus strip on the side of matchboxes to light. They could be lit off any surface. They were also cheaper to make. This type of match was first dipped in sulfur and then yellow or white phosphorus. The inclusion of sulfur, nicknamed brimstone, was one of the reasons these early matches were nicknamed lucifers, a truly scary nickname. These strike anywhere matches were primarily made by women and children and were dipped into the white or yellow phosphorus by hand over the course of many long hours sometimes as many as 16 hours a day with little to no ventilation. One German matchstick factory had such poor ventilation that the walls reportedly glowed blue at night, and workers could literally see their breath when walking home in the dark due to the inhalation of these glowing vapors. Some first-hand accounts of people that lived near these factories detail piles of glowing vomit along the roads leading from these factories. The Salvation Army would care for many of these poor workers, and one account shared that dimming the gas lamps in the Salvation Army facility revealed a greenish-white glow of workers' mouths, shirts, and hands. Phosphorus can accumulate in the jaw and inhibit bone metabolism, leading to osteomyelitis and a condition called Fossy Jaw. This condition is not too dissimilar to the modern-day condition Mrange, or medication-related osteonecrosis of the jaw, caused by bisphosphonates and other related medications. Approximately 11% of those exposed to the fumes in the factory would develop Fossy Jaw after an average of five years. Fossy Jaw often presented with swelling and abscesses. Sometimes intra and extraoral fistulas form to drain pus from these abscesses, and dead bony sequestrum may be present and visible extra or intraorally. The bone may even spontaneously fall out. Often, these jaws had to be resected, leading to disfiguration beyond the initial presentation. Fossy jaw was even nicknamed matchmaker's leprosy due to the deformity and social stigma. One physician at the time detailed a 22-year-old British match dipper who eventually died. In the physician's own words, the match dipper presented with a swelling that appeared on his right jaw, which had to be lanced, the discharge being extremely offensive. Subsequently, an abscess which had to be open appeared in his chest. The patient had rigors, appeared delirious, and died. These matchmakers were suffering and dying truly gruesome deaths. In 1888, the so-called London Match Girls strike at the Bryant and May factory took place and raised awareness of the working conditions. But the production of yellow and white phosphorus matches remained until outlawed in Great Britain in 1910. Since the banning of white and yellow phosphorus strike anywhere matches, we've returned to using matches which use red phosphorus embedded in strips on packaging, which are much safer to make and use. Thanks for watching this truly ghastly tale of the supernatural effects of poor working conditions. I hope everyone has a happy Halloween. I'd be forever grateful if you monster mashed the like and subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs> what an awful joke. Don't forget to brush your teeth after all that Halloween candy. Thanks again for watching and be well.